Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakapadash. That's all praise to the Heavenly Father. His true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. In his son's name, who the world is called Jesus Christ, real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shah. Also give a praise, honor, and glory unto the Havra Kakadash, the Holy Spirit, which is the force and entity that makes his edification possible. I want to say Shalom to our sincere heart at Aki and Wa'akwa. That's your brothers and sisters make your bodies a living sacrifice on a daily basis. So like you, on a daily basis in this wicked and adulterous generation. I also want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who tell us the truth and who rule well. And uh, it's my pleasure to bring unto you tonight <laughs> uh, more news concerning the destruction of the beast. You know, and pursuing the scriptures, the beast, right, is who NATO and the EU with America riding on top of it, which is that great harlot, which is uh, written in Revelation, the 17th chapter, man. And Yahweh Shemal Shah is about to make uh, uh, Esau desolate, man. And uh, as a matter of fact, let me start start off with Revelation 11 and 14 says the second woe is past. Right. And that's concerning the, the second world war. Woe means destruction. Right, it says the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And we see how things are amping up through the spirit, you know, uh, for the third world's war, you know, to, to, to come quickly. You know, if you want to be technical, hell is already here, you know, because before the actual wars, you have currency wars, you know, trading wars, things of that nature, you know, different, uh, different uh, uh, sanctions going on which is a form of war, right? So we're waiting on these missiles to start dropping, man. You know, but according to scriptures, you know, we know that you know, the MOTB has to be issued first, which that's well on its way. It's here. You know, brother's been doing videos about it. I've been doing videos about it. You know, the that uh, the brain chip is being more pushed, is being pushed more. And it seems like they're they're pushing it simultaneously right along with the um, with the with the chip in the hand. You know, it's like one week they'll speak about the chip in the hand. The next week they'll talk about um, the, the Neuralink, you know. So we see how Yahweh Bashar Shah is definitely turning up as the elder apostle um, of uh, Tahar had coined this year. You know, the year of Yahweh Bashar Shah turning up. But I want to play this quick video real quick concerning Russia. Um, you know, speaking about how the, uh, how the EU can be burnt <laughs> in 30 minutes, man. And that, hey, the scriptures already prophesied of that. Already prophesied of that, man, literally to a T. All right, so let's read it. So like, let's watch it. Let's read it. This site, a military parade with troops marching and tanks rolling in Red Square. It's a dress rehearsal for the country's victory day on Monday. As a matter of fact, let me get this scripture real quick. Because you see how... These people, man, got the, uh, they got everything prepared as Yahweh Shah or Yahweh told the Gentiles and Joel was at the third chapter. He says, prepare ye war among the Gentiles, man. All right. We see that that's been happening, you know, heavily uh, after, uh, you know, Putin had commenced war upon Ukraine. That's just been the, pretty much the talk of the town, you know, for this whole year so far is war. And that's the that's the atmosphere that Yahweh Bashar Shah has stirred up amongst planet Earth, man, because he's coming back to wage war against the inhabitants of the earth because of their wickedness. Right. This is Proverbs 21 and verse 31. The horse is prepared against the day of battle. Yeah, we see, you know, these Gentiles and their horses prepared for the day of battle. Right. They got their army tanks, you know, flaunting them. Right. They got their um, Humvees right there, their uh, missile cruisers, things of that nature. Right, so the horse is prepared against the day of the battle, but safety is of Yahweh Bashem Shah. Yeah, and we take refuge in our in our uh, commander in chief, man, Yahweh Shah. Right, because we know that he's going to get the victory, as it's written in Revelation 17 chapter. The Lamb is going to get the victory. So this is why we're up under his umbrella. Right, we're going to let what these people do, what they do, and we're going to do what we do on the right hand side. We're going to continue to make, you know, the Lord our habitation. Right, we're gonna stand. We're gonna stand stiffly for him, right? And we're gonna keep bringing out these scriptures because this is clearly <laughs> what is uh what's what's bringing this man down, man. The scriptures already says Second Corinthians, the tenth chapter, how his words, you know, bring down every high thing, right? And these words have been bringing down Esau and his kingdom, man, right? So let's keep watching. 
commemorating the Soviet victory over Nazi Germany in 1945. Oh, wow. And Russia... <clears throat> Today in Moscow, this site, a military parade with troops marching and tanks rolling in Red Square. It's a dress rehearsal for the country's Victory Day on Monday, commemorating the Soviet victory over Nazi Germany in 1945. And that's prophecy in and of itself. What did uh, what the Lord prophesy of, man, in Ezekiel the 38th chapter concerning uh, Russia or Gog and Magog? Ezekiel 38, verse 4, I'm going to get down to the point. It says, and I will turn thee back. And he's speaking about Gog and Magog, Russia. I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth. So the Lord putting hooks, if you're out fishing and you put a, a hook in that fish's mouth, right, you set the hook and you start to reel him, you're turning him into the direction, into, a, into the opposite direction. And see, you know, these years when the Lord put a dormant spirit uh, upon Gog and Magog, you know, they were going you know, in, in the opposite direction, you know, or they were, uh, yeah, going the opposite opposite direction of what they were at first, you know, they're known as, as, uh, as a bear, <laughs> you know, to be very vicious and cruel. And that's the spirit that the Lord had upon those devils. Cause you know, Russians, they're Edomites too, but that's the spirit he had upon them, you know, during the time of the cold war, you know, Nazi Germany. All right. And that's the spirit that they're coming back in. See, that's the Lord turning, turning this man back and putting hooks in his jaws. We literally just heard that on the news. See, it says that they were commemorating, right, it, uh, pretty much the Cold War. It says, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all your army, horses and horsemen, and all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Is that not what we just saw? All right. What a time to be alive. And Russia at war once again, winning the Soviet victory over Nazi Germany in 1945. Yeah. And Russia at war once again is bringing back Cold War concerns about the threat of its nuclear arsenal. CBS's Ian Lee reports. This is how Russia rattles sabers testing a missile capable of carrying a nuclear weapon more than 10,000 miles, nearly twice the distance from Moscow to Miami. And that's what the Lord spoke about here in Ezra, the 16th chapter, right? That's a long way, man. Nearly 10,000 miles for an ICBM nuclear missile to make it to your front door in 30 minutes or less. Come on, man. And, and what are niggas doing, man? Not paying attention to what's going on, man. Concerned, still talking about Will, Will Smith and Jada, you know, in the mall, still shopping every day, just, you know, not knowing what the hell's going on. But yet, y'all watch my shot, got missiles prepared for the ass, man. You know, this is uh, the book of Second Editors, the 16th chapter. And it says right down here, verse 13. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows that, that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. That's how you know it's not speaking about an ordinary arrow. An ordinary arrow can't be shot from one end of the earth to the other. And when you go into military um, uh, uh, terminology, they even coin their uh, their arrows so like they even coin their missiles to be what arrows, man. The Lord put that spirit upon them to to nickname those missiles arrows, because that's what the scriptures speak about right here, man. Let's read it again. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow; his arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss. Every single last one of these uh, missiles are going to be guided by the spirit of Yahweh Bashemal Shah. He's going to have an angel, literally. <laughs> Holding on to each arrow, man. Make sure they're not going to miss this intended target. It's going to hit in the middle of downtown Dallas. It's going to hit in the middle of New York. It's going to hit in the middle of Miami. Right? They even mentioned Miami. They say it could come to Miami twice. Come on, man. It says when they began to be shot into the ends of the world. Come on, let's get it. Yeah, this might, this might 
Russia's foreign minister recently called the risk of nuclear war considerable. And Russian talk shows have debated how quickly a bomb could reach Europe, even showing how one might create a nuclear tsunami to wipe out the UK. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has tried to... And look, a nigger. And what's he about to do? Play down the threat. Play down the threat. See? That's Jake, man. That's why the Lord's about to come as a thief in the night, man. And he might he might be a tear. Who knows? You know, I doubt it. Because Jake, man, Jake loves Esau. They are the father of the devil, as Yahweh said in John 8 and 44. But hey, they play down the threat, man. Why? To keep keep the masses asleep, you know. But the Lord, he, he about to he about to wake you up, man. <laughs> War rages on in Ukraine, a mushroom cloud wouldn't suddenly just appear on the horizon. West would have intelligence. So there'd be a warning. Like, yeah, there would be warnings that, that, that these, these warheads were being deployed in a period where it's not available for sea. Retired Commander Andy Corvette captained two of the UK's Vanguard-class submarines capable of delivering its Trident nuclear missile. How easy would it be for Putin to launch a nuclear weapon? My understanding of the Russian system is that it's very similar to the, to the British one. So the authority to launch must come from Putin. Although the decision- and We know ultimately the authority to launch doesn't come from Putin. It doesn't come from any of these particular leaders. The authority comes from who? Let's get it. Isaiah chapter 13 and verse, um, chapter 13 verse Verse four, it says, the noise of the multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of the nations gathered, gathered together for Yahweh a host. And what does that title mean? Yahweh a host, meaning uh, the most high of heaven's armies, right? Because those angels are, are, hey, those are the Lord's army men. Says Yahweh heaven's host, so like you, Yahweh a host mustereth the host of the battle so the lord let's go into that word mustereth real quick mustereth is pequod pequod right to attend to to muster to visit to reckon to appoint to appoint to to watch over see so the lord is watching over he's appointing <laughs> Uh, um, this battle, right? And he influences the minds of the kings as it's written about in Proverbs 21st chapter. Proverbs 21 and 1. The king's heart, meaning his mind, is in the hand of Yahweh Shah. As the rivers of water, he turneth it wheresoever he will. So he's going to turn the king's heart, king, the king's mind into pushing the, pushing the button. That's simple, man. So let's keep going. Jim rests with the political leader. The ability to do that doesn't. The world witnessed the destructive power of American nuclear bombs nearly 80 years ago in Japan. Corbett believes one going off in Ukraine would likely be many times larger, but doesn't see that happening. The political and strategic experts don't think this is very likely at all. The, the problem would come if something goes spectacularly wrong and somebody makes a really bad misjudgment. And once again, the Lord is going to put that spirit, you know, upon these uh, leaders to start pushing buttons. You know, hey, <laughs> as it's written in Isaiah 54, let's get it real quick. The Lord didn't have them to build these missiles just for them to put it up in a museum and polish them up for people to look at them while they drink their latte. No, they, they build in this to, to use it. And the Lord put that spirit upon him. This is Isaiah chapter 54, and verse 16. Behold, I have created the smith. And what is a smith? Somebody that works with fire and metal. You know, they, they uh, was about to break it down. I have created the smith, right? And even uh, there's a certain gun. It's called Smith and Wesson, you know? And what are they known for? They're known for, uh, um, you know, making guns. And that's what a smith does. And really a gun is like a miniature version of a missile. All right, so he says, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth the instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. Come on. What's, what's that? What's that? Uh, 
What's that work that's that's blown in the coals of fire and that's going to destroy things? The missiles, man. The Lord created, created it. He says, I have in this NLT, I have created the blacksmith who fans the coals beneath the forge and makes the weapons of destruction. And I have created the armies that destroy. Yeah, that's right. And Joel, the second chapter uh, speaks about these missiles, you know, being being arrayed, you know, as, as an army. It's going to be so many of them. If war is the realm of uncertainty, then a misjudgment can't be ruled out. Ian Lee, CBS News, Swindon, England. That's right, man. So, hey, so we're um, we're getting close. We're getting close to salvation. And we, we know, know the leaked draft opinion seems to have involved some conservative activists to pursue other controversial. <laughs> and well, they they were just talking about what uh, that. Uh, reproductive rights, if you will. I'm afraid to say that A word, the A B O word, Roe versus Wade, because they'll strike me. But hey, that's part of the reason why the Lord's about to destroy this place. The beast, which once again, the beast is concerning NATO and the EU. But that cherry on the top is who? America. All right, so let's grab this. This is Luke chapter, uh, what is that? Luke 12 and 49. This is how we're shout speaking, man. He says, I have come to set the world on fire and I wish it were already burning. So Yahweh Shah wants this destruction more than we do. Why? So he can set up his kingdom, man. It's Colossians chapter one. And verse uh, 16. For by him were all things created. That includes missiles. There's not one thing that is not made, <laughs> that, that Yahweh Bashmah Shah did not make. So he says, for by all things, so like it, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. So Yahweh Shah said in Luke 12 that he wished the place was already, this place was already burning. So what did he do? He created the, the waster to destroy. All right. And I'm going to get this in Revelation 18 chapter because they said that they can burn up uh, the EU, you know, within 30 minutes. And as you see the title here in Revelation 18, it says Babylon has fallen. Now, Babylon, along with its uh, um, uh, allies, you know, they're going to fall together. This is uh, Revelation chapter 18. I want to say, let's see. Somewhere. Speaks about that hour. Yep, here we go. This is Revelation chapter 18 and verse. Yep, we'll start at verse 18, says 17. It says, for in one hour, so great riches is come to naught. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All these particular uh, luxurious cities and sky skylines and you know metropolitan areas and the, and the wealth, you know the resources, the oil, you know everything here it says for a one hour, so great riches has come to naught. Now, how you got to ask yourself with Babylon and and the beast, you know being destroyed because it speaks about that in Revelation nineteen chapter, the beast being set on fire. How? What type of destruction is going to happen in order for this place to be burned up in an hour? See? And really, when you go into that word hour in scriptures, it's, an hour just symbolizes a short amount of time. Because it speaks about how the, how the plagues and uh, tribulation and things of that will come in one hour as well. Now, we know that that's, that's been happening over a span of time. So this speaks about how it's going to come all at once, it seems like, in a short amount of time. And, hey, these devils are throwing out, you know, pretty much their timeline of how long they, they believe that these particular ICBMs can destroy. And they said within 30 minutes. And the scripture spot on, man. So it says in, four, in one hour, so great riches has come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off. Yeah, these other nations are going to be seeing the smoke, you know come from from the western hemisphere 
It says, and they cried when they saw the smoke of her burning. Yeah, America, as well as the EU, saying, so I can see. Hey, look at that. Every time I speak about some type of destruction about this place, my Apple Watch always kicks on. See? Hey, they listening, man. Hey, it's cool. Y'all need to hear it. it says, and, and that's part of the reason why, because we sick of y'all's ass, man, vexing us, spying on us, man. Verse 18, and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, what city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, alas, alas, that great city wherein were, were made rich all that had ships. Yeah, they're going to be crying because they don't have anybody to do uh, commerce with anymore. Because <laughs> America pretty much, pretty much made all these nations rich with their traffic, with their trade. And it says, alas, alas, that great city we're in were made rich, all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is she made desolate. Yeah, that's right, man. In one hour is this place going to be made desolate. I'm going to grab this real quick in uh, Psalm 73. This is... Uh... It's the book of Psalms, chapter 73, and verse 17 says, Until I went into the sanctuary of the Most High, then I understood therein. Yeah, that's right. Until we came into this truth, or until the Lord brought us into this truth, that's when we understood therein. Let me see what that says in the NLT. Ooh. Then I went into your sanctuary, O Yahweh Bashmah Shah. And I finally understood the destiny of the wicked. Let's keep reading. Until it says, surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Yeah, slippery places is pretty much going into how this man is, uh, is moving in restricted ways. If you're slipping and sliding all, all over the place, you're watching how you step. You know, and you're, and you're destined to fall at any moment. And that's exactly how Esau is, man. He's slipping and sliding all over the place right now, man. That's what happens when you build up a nation off of rape, rob, and murder, especially off, the, after, uh, off of uh, the backs of the Lord's chosen people. It says, surely thou didst, thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou cast them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment? See, as in a moment, they are utterly consumed with terror. So all these hundreds, really going back to the Greeks, Thousands of years of Esau's oppressive, you know, a uh, rulership, a ruler shit, I'll call it. It's been a ruler shit, you know. In a moment, all that's gonna be brought to naught, man. That's how cold Yahweh Bashmal Shai is, man. He is powerful. And then you also gotta consider the the fire that's gonna be coming off those chariots, man. Those chariots are gonna be having some destructive, some destructive uh, uh, fire coming off of it, hitting this place, man. And that's spoken about in Habakkuk, the, the third chapter. Man, so Esau got it bad. <laughs> Esau got it bad. They're about to drink of the cup. All the way down to the dregs. This is Psalms chapter 9 and verse 17. It says, the wicked shall be turned into hell. And all the nations that forget Yahweh Bashmah Shah. Yeah, that's also a hell cut too. For any of you Christians that might be listening, you know, thinking that, you know, when you die, you go to hell someplace on the ground where you're going to be burning. No, the wicked is going to be turning to hell, man. And you're standing, if you're in America or you're in the EU, right? You're, you're, about, you're literally standing in a place that's about to be turned into the lake of fire. Pursuant to what? Revelation 20 of chapter. Let's get that. It's Revelation chapter 20 and verse 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire there. That's right. It says, this is the second death. Yeah, and those missiles are going to, um, you know, pretty much kick off that second death. And the Lord is going to add more fire when he comes. All right, so let's get, get this real quick in uh, Jeremiah 51 and 25. It says, behold, I'm against the old destroying mountain. And who's that destroying mountain? Esau, Edom, Mount Seir, Ezekiel 30, uh, the 35th chapter. Behold, I'm against the old destroying mountain says Yahweh, Bahashim Yahusha, which destroys all the earth. 
And this is proof, man. This man's destroying the whole earth. A, a hypersonic missile. Like, bro, like, who do you think you are? You know what I'm saying? To, to build something like that. Now, of course, we know that the Lord put it up on his mind, but the Lord's going to charge him for that. Because <laughs> the Lord, hey, this is why the Lord created the, the wicked for this day. Proverbs 16 and verse 4, the Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. So he was made for this for this time. So he says, for behold, I'm against the old destroying mountain, says Yahweh Bashimel Shah, which destroys all the earth, and I will stretch out my hand upon thee, and I will roll thee down from the rocks, and I will make thee a burnt mountain. How's the Lord going to make this place a burnt mountain? Hey, by sinning. By sending those ICBM missiles. Get a couple more in and out. Psalms 11 and 6. Upon the wicked. Let's start at verse 5. The Lord trieth the righteous. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he tries us, man. He tests us. He proves us concerning the, the hopefully elect. It says, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. Upon the wicked, he shall rain snares fire and brimstone and a horrible tempest this shall be the portion of their cup so the portion of esau's cup is to get rained down upon by fire and brimstone and that's a similar way how sodom and gomorrah were brought uh you know um were brought into desolation because of their wicked deeds the lord rained fire and brimstone that was actual fire and brimstone but the lord's about to put this modern fire and brimstone upon him man and who knows, hell, probably even the actual fire and brimstone as well, man. This place is about to get hot, man. Hot. Malachi 4 and 1. For, the, for behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, says Yahweh hopes that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Come on, man. So you know, that's pretty much it on that. And um, as you see, this other article here it says why North Korea is ramping up its missile test. So damn, man, you got Russia, you got North Korea, you got China. As a matter of fact, I think I got, got that article pulled up too. Yeah, and this was, I was going to do a lesson upon this, but man, it just seems like the Lord is just dropping, it, dropping juicier and juicier articles every day. But this is uh, put out on April 5th. It says China preparing for war with the U.S., Man, Asia by partnering with Russia, expert warns. So you got Asia partnering with Russia, China. They preparing for war against the United States. Uh, North Korea is doing all these missile tests. Russia is just doing it. <laughs> Come on, man. So as we got in Proverbs 21, the horse is prepared for the day of battle, but safety is of Yahweh Bashmah Shah, man. So that's what we're going to keep doing. We're going to keep trusting and, um, and putting our faith in Yahweh Bashmah Shah, doing what he expects us to do. Right. And stay strong in this work, man. So with that, I hope you brothers and sisters were edifying to next time. I'm going to give all praise on the glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Kapadash, DTA, Baba Ball, Kwame Shirala, Shalawan.